Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are finally going to be making some composite propellant. So I got my resin, got the curative. These were a bear. First I had bad resin, then I had bad curative. Got new resin, got new curative, tested them, and it finally... There we go. You can kind of see the... Uh, this is the cured resin. Nice little rubbery puck. This kind of rubber won't really fit in your wallet though, but uh, pretty neat. Very flexible, much uh, much more flexible than I was expecting this cured resin to be. But uh, still got a bit of smell to it, gnarly. But did that little test batch to make sure we have good resin and curative, so we know we got good stuff now. And uh, this is going to be such a small batch, I don't think I'm going to degas it. I'm just going to be careful to uh, not get too much air trapped in it and tamp it uh, very carefully into the mold here. So the actual propellant I'm going to be using is ammonium perchlorate based propellant as pretty much all composite propellant is. Of course there's some exotic materials and people are trying to get... Firstly, if you're ever considering getting into composite rocketry, you got to get this book here by uh, Terry McCreary, Experimental Composite Propellant. Goes into everything you could possibly ever want to know about composite propellants. It's an awesome, awesome book and uh, just wealth of information. So highly recommended. And uh, I honestly would not even venture into composite rocketry without this book. Uh, I think it's kind of a requirement from a safety standpoint from understanding the chemistry, all that sort of good stuff. But he's got a, a recipe in here, or a, a composition, um, which is a simple starter, starter propellant, and I'm gonna be modifying that a little bit because I don't have the type of resin he calls out. So our composite propellant is gonna be 79.8 parts ammonium perchlorate, 0.2 parts lamp black, and then the, the remaining 20 parts is gonna be our resin. So 17.42 grams of the R45, and then 2.58 grams of the MDI. And when I say grams and parts, um, parts are basically what it would be, at, it's basically a percentage. So if you have 100 grams, and you have 20 parts of something, you're gonna have 20 grams total in that 100 gram mix. All right, I got my ammonium perchlorate weighed out. And now I'm gonna weigh out the 0.2 grams of lamp black. All right, that's pretty close. Well, a tiny bit will stay in the cup when I go to mix anyway, so that is pretty damn close. And before I do anything else, I am gonna prep my mold here, so I'm gonna lube my spindle with some silicone grease. That way, nothing sticks to it. Because this resin is some sticky stuff. And I of course don't want to ruin my nice molds that uh, that Foley Defense sent me. All right, all lubed up. And one thing to note here, I did sieve the ammonium perchlorate to make sure there's no large chunks because we want 200 micron AP. Um, any large clumps will slow our burn rate and also screw up the homogeneous nature of our, our propellant. Now I think performance wise AP is only about a third uh, what would it be higher impulse or higher energy than uh, nitrate based propellants but the cool thing is we have the Arduino test stand so we'll actually be able to quantify that data and see exactly where it lands. Just saw my camera battery died so hopefully we didn't miss too much here but we're mixing in the AP oh this is gonna be a bear once everything's added holy shit I don't think a tongue depressor was the optimal instrument to use here for mixing now a lot of the guys who upscale this they actually get KitchenAid mixers and they'll add uh, all sorts of viscosity modifying agents that actually kinda of make this more a syrup than a, than a semi-solid like you see here. All right, at this point I'm gonna add the lamp black. Looks like I will have plenty to cast the grain with quite a bit left over. So maybe we'll do a little uh, 
unconfined burn test on this stuff. Now in the future, instead of using lamp black, I do want to add some burn rate catalysts. In my opinion, the coolest ones are copper. Uh, lots of guys use copper chromite. I have copper oxide, which I think will probably work just as well. Um, but it gives an awesome blue or green color to the flame, depending on the copper compound you use. And of course, some guys add strontium compounds for red color. So th there's a lot of cool things you can do with uh, ammonium perchlorate compositions that you can't do with nitrate compositions. Because this is actually a flame when it burns. Uh, so, you, Whereas with uh, potassium nitrate compositions, you just see a big plume of smoke because the combustion products are, are quite a bit solid. Whereas here, you're getting all gaseous combustion products. So you get a beautiful flame. Just gonna do small little pieces at a time just to make sure I don't introduce air bubbles. Everything that's scrap gets burnt. It's not the most ecologically friendly thing, but you never want to put any of this stuff in your trash can. <laughs> you, uh, you'll be asking for a disaster. So anything that has touched the propellant or the uh, ammonium perchlorate is going right into the fire bin. I was really hoping this stuff would be a little bit more doughy, but it's, uh, it's a bit harder to work than I expected. Not terrible, but uh, just not as easy as rocket candy. There we have it, guys. Our first composite rocket grain. Well, casted. <laughs> gonna leave this sucker to cure, and I'm actually gonna put it in my um, curing chamber at an elevated temperature so it uh, hopefully cures a little faster than, than at ambient. Well, as usual, it never ends. I go to put the propellant in my curing chamber. Uh, this is an old Think Geek mini fridge, which actually also acts as a heater. Uh, you can set it to cool or heat. And right now I got it set to a buck 20, but the damn thing wouldn't turn on. Uh, the past few times I had turned it on, all the electronics would start flashing and all sorts of weird stuff for a little while. Very Michael J. Fox-ish with its twitchiness. And uh, turns out it was the 12 volt switching power supply in there, so it would take 120 in uh, right there and spit out 12 volt DC right here. Can't really figure out what went wrong on here. There's one bulge cap, but I think that's the output capacitor, so that probably wouldn't really be the culprit because I was only getting 300 millivolts out of here. So, and the, uh, the IC there looks okay, and that's a Texas instrument, that's a good part. So probably one of the MOSFETs or something of that nature. So in the meantime, <laughs> pretty redneck rig. I just have it hooked up to an old computer power supply uh, off the 12 volt rail. So now she can run. All right guys, fresh out of the curing oven. Let's see how this propellant turned out. Still quite warm. Ooh. Should probably go get gloves on. Looks like silicone oil did not work very well to stop this stuff from sticking. Shit. We might be in trouble here. The other interesting oh that okay. That doesn't look good to start. <laughs> The other interesting thing is it seems to have expanded a bit, which I was not expecting from this resin. Um, you can definitely see it, it bulged quite a bit. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, so it separated here and then it also swelled up there. Uh, not very good. Hopefully we can get something usable out of this. Look at that, the resin kind of like sank down there. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is going to be ugly. If I can even get it off. Shit. To the vice. Oh, Jesus. Oh! Oh, she's coming loose. All right. See if I can get it off in one piece. 
Not looking too bad. Definitely some shit stuck to the spindle. It's a bit ugly. Oh, holy shit. I don't know if you could hear that, but <laughs> a bunch of ammonium perchlorate just fell right out of there. Well, it's kind of funky. The, uh, the ammonium perchlorate doesn't seem super well bound to the actual resin. Uh, if you could hear that when I pulled it off, a bunch kind of fell out. And this stuff is a lot more rubbery than I expected it to be in its cured state. It's been curing for a few days now at 130 degrees, so it's definitely fully cured. But um, if you ever worked with like RTV silicone, like uh, Permatex Ultra Black, the stuff used to seal up valve covers and whatnot, it feels just like that. So I'm going to have to square up these ends and uh, see if I can get a nice fit into the single grain motor casing. And of course, I'm also going to have to machine a new 9mm nozzle because I don't know if you remember, but on the one of the last tests, it uh, I think when we tested the 3 grain motor with the R candy, the sorbitol based R candy, we got some major nozzle erosion. So I'm just going to try to get this end nice and squared up. Well, it's got that going for it, it, it cuts very nicely. You know what? That wasn't such a bad cleanup. Hopefully we don't have any big air pockets that are going to make our uh, casing explode. But I think we got a pretty decent little test grain here. We should go test the uh, we should go test the big puck. See how this thing burns. If I can get that stick out, that would make a perfect fuse hole. All right, let's see how the big chunk of scrap burns. Oh, that's sketchy. Whoa. Well, they are definitely not joking when they say one of the uh, combustion byproducts is hydrochloric acid. Look at this. This is a 6061 T6. I mean, you can see how how much it was etched and I, I sprayed water on it almost immediately after after the burn went out so bit worried for the casing hopefully I mean there's no you can't really feel any pitting so I think it's all surface damage but if you fire one of these casings you better clean them out quick if you're using composite propellant I didn't realize it was that corrosive given I'm sure under uh, under chamber pressure, the combustion products probably change with a the very elevated pressure, and probably a lot more of the gases are exhausted properly than just condensing on the nearby plate. But uh, but still, pretty gnarly. All right, so got one of the nozzle blanks that Foley Defense sent us, and a uh, what is this 1132nd drill bit. A little beat up, but we're just doing graphite, so it's really not a, a tough material to machine. Self-lubricating. <laughs> Got the threads taped with some painter's tape just so we don't damage them. Uh, chucking it up in the three jaw there. And then we'll just uh, do the convergent, divergent section. That's already kind of done, the uh, convergent, but we'll uh, remount the divergent section. And we should have a new nozzle. This... Uh, 1130 seconds is what about 8.5 millimeters something around there oh, Right at the limits of my jaws here. It's what the wife said Obviously we need to machine that to uh, get a proper convergent section Fucking jaw fell out now to do the convergence side, I have a beautiful little homemade tool here. <laughs> Just an old spade bit that uh, had a nice run in with the bench grinder. But perfect angle. This is pretty redneck rocketry here. All right. 
There's our divergent section. There we go. Got ourselves a beautiful new nozzle. Ready to rock and roll. Hopefully the threads are in good shape. Don't let me down, frog tape. You beautiful reptilian bastard. They look good. So our new nozzle comes in at about 8.77 millimeters. I don't want to be too rough on it because these will definitely uh, gouge the ID. But well, looks pretty nice. Gonna anti seize this sucker up, load the grain, and get to testing. Let's load the grain. What a beautiful fit. All right. I think we're uh, we're bottomed out against the grain. Although this being a little proud makes me kind of nervous. But I think our grain's just a little bit oversized. Let's go set up. Face shield on. All right, guys. Pucker factor of 12 is set. Let's do this thing. Well, the numbers weren't all that great. I think our nozzle was way too big. Didn't build enough chamber pressure. All right, guys. Well, pretty disappointing results from the Arduino test stand. Um, unfortunately, not a whole lot of thrust. Max thrust was under a kilogram, 863.1 grams. So, I mean, we really should have just hired an asthmatic chain smoking grandpa with emphysema to blow through a straw and I think we would have done a lot better. <laughs> you can see that kind of interesting part of the burn there where the motor uh, like chuggled, it uh, oscillated in its power output and I think that is indicative of too small or too large a nozzle. It wasn't able to develop proper chamber pressure. We should see a much tighter burn with a lot higher output but uh, we just we didn't have an optimal burn there at all. So you win some, you lose some. This, this was at least a learning experience. You know, we got the process down for making propellant now. Kind of. I still need to work out the whole demolding and whatnot. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Even though it was a bit of a disappointment in the final result here, it was a fun project. And we're going to try changing it up next time, uh, dropping down throat diameter, and maybe adding some copper catalysts to the mix to uh, try to increase the burn rate. We should be in pretty good waters there. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I also have an Amazon link below that if you save it as your homepage, it'll help the channel out big time. Not promoting any specific product, you just, whatever you buy helps the channel out and uh, won't cost you a dime. So, much appreciated. I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.